Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, we are talking about ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, possibly the very most likely thing to destroy all life on Earth, including everyone who doesn't know or care what they are or why they're so dangerous. Our guest, Peter Manos, is a retired consultation liaison psychiatrist, a member of the Washington Physicians for Social Responsibility, and the author of a number of books on learning of the U.S. government's plan for new land-based ICBM. He decided to write a novel, and the result is the fantastic book called Shadows. Peter Manos, welcome to Talk World Radio. Thank you, David. I'm really very thrilled to be here. I really am. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for writing the book, Shadows, which is absolutely fantastic. A, a, a novel, not a nonfiction book, not, not the type of book I usually read, mostly. Um, before we talk about the book, let's talk a little bit about ICBMs. Can you give us a little background on the Minuteman missile and the more recent developments? Sure. Um, in general, and it's important to say that most Americans really have no clue. <laughs> it's um, said about every topic in the world. <laughs> okay, uh, so um, ICBM stands for Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, and it is it needs no further re really clarification. The United States began to place these missiles in silos in the 1960s and there have been iterations there was the minuteman one the minuteman two the minuteman three they're placed in in silos spread over thousands of square miles in wyoming montana and north dakota and, and there's some missiles in colorado and nebraska too there are about 400 of these um they um a, as as is also true of the missile that the Air Force wants to replace them with, they're unnecessary, dangerous, and expensive, and we can talk about that. But I've followed this a little bit about missiles and warheads and so forth, a little bit since I was a sophomore in college when we had the Cuban Missile Crisis, and I had a dream of a nuclear explosion. It was just a flash of a blinding white light that was the whole dream but it was scary as hell and since that time i've sort of had a, a feeler out but when i discovered five or six years ago that the air force wanted to replace these icbms with a new missile i i decided well people need to know about why they're you know why they are what they are why they're dangerous expensive and unnecessary so um that's to reiterate that we have currently 400 silo-based intercontinental ballistic missiles. They're called the Minutemen missile, and they're in the in upper uh, northwest of this of this country. So, I mean, that's I, I would say that's all the background people really well, need. I, I think, Peter, one thing people may not grasp is that they're not just dangerous because if they're shot off accidentally or intentionally, they destroy the earth, but also because unlike the sea-based missiles or the air-based missiles, the land-based missiles are in a location that's known to other people in distant lands with missiles and if people in those distant lands get an inkling that there could be a nuclear war started and they've got seconds or moments to fire theirs to make sure they're part of destroying the earth and somebody else doesn't get to destroy the earth without them, uh, they're headed for those locations. They're, those are the targets, right? There, there are some, there are some of the targets. Um, there are also targets uh, at the naval bases on the east coast and the and the and the west coast um but and there, the, there, there, are, there are other targets too right but if the lunatics on one side think that the lunatics on the other side think that the lunatics on the first side have started a nuclear war then they've just got moments to use them or lose them right 
Right, right. That and that phrase is is useful to remember. It these are sitting ducks on hair trigger alert, and they encourage a use them or lose them mentality. Here, here the danger is a Russian missile or another adversary's missile can get here in thirty minutes. That leaves from from what I've read about twelve minutes to decide. Is this warning that's flashing a warning of a of a adversary's attack is it a real attack or is this a false alarm 12 minutes to decide whether it's a false alarm and and if a mistake is made and it's considered a real alarm world war three begins and the end of civilization um the as you were pointing out the sea-based missiles in the submarines and on the planes there's more time to decide whether or not to fire the missiles or drop the bombs. But there's very little time for the people um, for the people uh, deciding on whether an alarm is real or not to uh, to decide whether or not to fire the sea based missile. By the way, the people know the adversaries know Russians specifically know where these uh, missiles are because it's part of the start. Uh, treaty they're supposed to know where they are it's uh, part of maintaining the treaty that we know where theirs are we know they know where ours are um, and we don't raise the number of warheads over 1550 per per side and when the united states puts missile bases in eastern europe right by the border of russia that are capable of firing nuclear missiles they claim they're for non-nuclear missiles but you know that may be changing the russia doesn't get that luxurious 12 minutes right they 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 certainly don't they certainly don't although i'm less familiar with the placement of our uh, warheads in in europe and they're definitely there well, in recent years, in Poland and Romania, putting these missile bases in has been a huge point of objection for the Russian government, um, which I think the world has noticed has completely lost its mind over it. It's 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 incredible. The, the United States should. The only reason for the United States to have atomic weapons is for deterrence. That's the the only reason and obviously we should eliminate them all eventually but that's that's st still uh, a ways off i guess i would i would have a different word for that than reason uh but uh why why make the case against this madness in fiction uh you make it very well here in nonfiction. why why write a novel <laughs> um I wrote a novel with the specific idea of informing the public in a format that would that would be uh, entertaining. Um, figuring that you know even uh, um, Ellsberg's book I don't think sold that many. It's a fantastic book, Daniel Ellsberg's The uh, Doomsday Machine. So I wanted to write something that would appeal to people. Uh, it's a little. It's not quite a thriller, but it's been described as a thriller. So there's a little sex and violence in it in good taste, but <laughs> um, it's, I wanted people, you know, I want people to easily digest this material. It's repeated in uh, about it, the missiles being unnecessary, dangerous and expensive with the details. Uh, the, uh, I mean, details that people ordinarily might pass by let me just mention one detail it's going to cost it's estimated between 80 and 140 billion dollars uh, to replace the minutemen with the new sentinel missile and another 150 billion dollars to maintain them for 50 years you have to see those numbers several times for them to remember them you know and and in the, in the book uh, edna o'hare my heroine you know, educates people slowly in, in my not North Dakota, she educates them. So yeah, I wanted this to be something that people would read for the, for the entertainment value and also thereby absorbing some of this material about the missiles.
I think people know, some people know that that kind of money could absolutely transform some fields like energy or infrastructure or education or, you know, but they hear about the president asking for another hundred something billion every, every, you know, couple months now to throw weapons at some other wars. Uh, I mean, it seems that there isn't, it's hard for people to believe there's a limit that that the money isn't just infinite because whenever Wall Street wants it or the weapons dealers want it to give more weapons to Ukraine and Israel and Taiwan, it, you know, it's it just flows like water. So how do we how do we explain to people that there's a problem spending that kind of money on this madness? Well, I I I do think people. I think if they hear it a couple of times in the newspaper or, or you know, on the radio or the internet, it, it does strike them. It, it, some people will begin to question the the need to spend this kind of money. It's a lot of money. <laughs> I think most people will, will, if you talk about it, they will uh, agree it's a lot. Or ordinary people, they say, well, it's a lot of money. And then if they see oh, they, it's yeah. unnecessary, then it begins to it begins to percolate. It's unnecessary, you know, then it'll percolate, I I I think. But this is uh, this is this is a little bit egomaniacal, me wanting to in, educate or inform the public, but it I had to do something. It pissed me off so greatly that I uh, and then it was fun to write, so. Well, it absolutely should have, and it's fun to read. Uh, we're speaking with Peter Manos, and the book is called Shadows, and it is suspenseful, and it does have lots of characters, and uh, people should enjoy reading it as well as be made aware of something by reading it that is one of the most important topics there is. Um, do you want to share uh, any scenes from the book? Do you want to read uh, an excerpt? I, I really do, uh, I, and I will. They're, they're short excerpts, but I want to just... Um, well, I just want to mention what I'd like to see happen. And I want to mention, I'd like every peace group, every anti-nuclear weapons group in the country to talk about this missile, the Sentinel missile. Everyone, people are doing good work. World Beyond War is doing good work. But I would still like to see it and other groups all mentioned it over and over again that the three you know aspects unnecessary expensive and dangerous okay yes i i'd be thrilled to to read some short excerpts uh, and appreciate you asking me um let me okay so it's not just a book about edna o'hare who's a quirky a quirky woman who wears a, a I even have my prop here. A witch's she hat. Wears a, she wears a witch's hat for, to a, attract attention. She's not for, a witch. <laughs> for, the, for those of you listening, Peter is wearing a witch's hat. <laughs> so one of the heroes of the book is this 24-year-old former Marine, a bit rootless. His mother's having psychiatric difficulties in New York. So he's driving from the West Coast to the East Coast. And he's caught in a thunderstorm, a lightning storm in, in Minot, uh, North Dakota, where the, the book takes place. And he's been pounding on this door in the, in the dark in the rain. To, it's an isolated farmhouse. He's been, he wants to kick the door down. Almost simultaneously, the inner door opened. The sky flashed again. And the porch light came on. An old woman in a white bathrobe stood there, a light in the room behind her. He was in no condition to examine her with his usual thoroughness for signs of danger, but saw that her hair was surprisingly red, that she was slender, and with her right hand over the grip, held a double-barreled break-action shotgun cradled in the crook of her left arm. He had the presence of mind to be aware how he must appear to her, a bedraggled young man with several days of dark scraggly beard and a scowl on his face. Hell, he, he could star in a slasher film. Sorry to wake you up, but I, my car is stuck in the mud. I 
I wonder if you might have a place for me to spend the night. I don't want to sleep in the car. She stared at him as if concentrating on a particularly annoying crossword puzzle. That That's where Will Larrabee, who's going to help Ed O'Hare out, um, where they meet. Um, then. She, she gives him more than a place to stay. She gives him something to work on, right? I'll say. Okay, so. One of the first things that Edna does is goes to one of these missiles. It's underground, of course. It's in a silo. It's surrounded by chain link fence and barbed wire on the top, razor wire on the top. She doesn't touch the fence. The fence has posted in large red letters, and this is true. This is from one of the missiles. Warning, restricted area. It is unlawful to enter this area without permission from the installation commander. Use of deadly force authorized. The response to this sort of incursion was supposed to be quick, but Edna paced back and forth for 45 minutes before the gray vehicle, an oversized rhinoceros, grumbled its way up the gravel access road toward her. She faced it paralyzed. When it was 20 feet away, the raspy grumbling ceased. A woman with a megaphone and a man with an assault rifle stepped out. Drop your weapon, boomed the woman through the megaphone. Uncomprehending and scared, Edna, still gripping the cane, raised her hands overhead. The weapon now inclined toward the airman. <laughs> A burst of rifle fire. Petrified, Edna stood only more stiffly. Drop it, said the woman. A man jumped from the vehicle and addressed the airman with a rifle. God damn it, Forster, are you completely nuts? That's an old lady with a cane. What the hell are you thinking, you trigger-happy idiot? Get back in the truck. Sergeant Caulfield walked up to O'Hare, who by now had dropped her weapon. You can put your hands down. What do you think you're doing here? Protesting, she said weakly. And I've got one other short uh, reading. Ras Rasmussen is a doctor. Andy Rasmussen is a popular doctor who slowly comes around to Edna's point of view. The um, public relations person for Grumman, the company that's going to make the missiles, doesn't want any bad publicity. And in Little Minot, 44,000 people, in Little Minot at the Army base, this public relations person does not want this popular doctor giving speeches about the Sentinel missile. So she plans a seduction. She lures him up to her bedroom. As Rasmussen asked, her name is Claudia Cummings. As Rasmussen asked Cummings questions about past history of anxiety, family history, and a little developmental history, he felt, he felt a blossoming calmness, which unfolded into a sense of well-being and lightness. Sorry, he said, I seem to be losing my train of thought. She scooted next to him along the sofa and put a hand on his thigh. Oh, that's all right. Why don't you examine my breasts one more time to let me know everything is okay? Well, I, I, I don't know. Yes, you do. She stood taking his hands and pulled. When he resisted, she spoke more firmly. Now, please get up. He was euphoric, relaxed, his thinking vague, unfocused. He arose from the sofa. Tingling inside now, he was barely able to ask, did you put something in my tea? Oh, just a little something so you wouldn't be so tense. He felt too good to protest. She walked him to the bed. You sit here, she said. She removed her blouse and bra and lay supine, her arms crossed above her head. I won't read any more right now. I, I assure you it's not pornographic, but it is erotic. <laughs> <laughs> and and it that. is a, and it is a great book that is uh, based on a lot of uh, reality. I imagine you know the name Megan Rice and and some of the the actual people who have gone and protested at uh, at bases with well, it, um, I I I don't know her name. I but I know that, that there have been protests. People have uh, three nuns spread. Uh, blood on some of the fences. There have been protests, but they're few and far between and um, more power to those people. 
um, for people for people listening or for people who read the book shadows and are awakened and care about this incredible danger what what should people be doing should they be protesting at nuclear weapons bases should they be educating others should they be promoting the treaty for the prohibition of nuclear weapons or the legislation that exists or could exist in congress should we be trying to maintain that start treaty agreement should we be pushing these initiatives to get institutions to divest their money from nuclear weapons what what should we be working on well you see see david that all of these things that you mentioned are being done by varied groups across the country and they all have a slightly different focus um all of these things are important that you mentioned but i know i'm a broken record what i would like people to do who read the book is to talk to other people about the sentinel missile to have enough fingertip knowledge just you know just fingertip knowledge um to to explain the fent the the sentinel oh and another thing it's not necessary for deterrence one of our nuclear submarines one of our trident submarines can deliver a uh, hundred hydrogen it's incredible to think about a hundred thermonuclear weapons to uh, uh, to destroy a country one submarine and we've got you know seven or eight or nine of them at sea at any one time how you know we've got almost a thousand a thousand hydrogen bombs what do you god what do you need for deterrence you know one of these should be enough i want people to be able to tell other people about that because until everyone is fluent and upset um on this particular issue nothing will happen and this is a concrete thing some things are more abstract to people um so so everything you mentioned is important but if everyone i want everyone to talk about this damn sentinel missile that's what i want well i'm gonna respectfully uh disagree with the notion that there's a slightest drop of sanity in the idea of deterrence. I think we've had tremendous luck uh, surviving the existence of nuclear weapons and endless near accidental apocalypses and that Cuban Missile Crisis, if it wasn't for one stubborn Russian sailor, we could all be, you know, dead or never born. Uh, so I think we have to get rid of all of these things. But for those who believe in the need to be able to destroy the Earth many times over, you make a good point that you don't need the land-based missiles to do it when you could do it with the submarines and the airplanes so why don't why don't you tell us we've we've got five minutes left why don't you tell us what should be on our fingertips that we should okay. be telling everybody what should be on the flyer we're handing every human in, in fact in fact you know i did i you i don't know if you can read it or not i, I don't want you to read it but it just it okay the three things number one this is expensive uh, incredibly in expensive two it's not necessary because one of our submarines is enough deterrent to force um and three they're very dangerous they could be launched on a false alarm the uh, there's they're dangerous in russia too these silo based missiles they could be launched on a false alarm i regarding deterrence it would be nice to have a discussion about this sure i'd like to get rid of all these weapons but at least if in arguing uh about this one one missile one dangerous expensive and unnecessary missile one can cite the submarines well yes let's get rid of them too i mean they're the worst the most destructive weapon mankind has ever devised one of these submarines um yes I, yeah i just have to re repeat it but i don't like <laughs> our goal humanity's goal should be the elimination of all nuclear weapons you know everyone will agree to that everyone even the military industrial complex will will agree verbally to that but if we want to go step by step and i'm all for it we could go even smaller steps we could take the weapons off the missiles <laughs> so that there is a delay, so there's a time required to put the weapon on the missile. This is what China does differently from Russia and the United States. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, it, it's true these are on hair trigger alert. That could be changed. It could be changed so that uh, they would not be 
you know, not be fired if there's any question. Uh, and it, uh, the, the U.S. denies that they're on hair trigger alert. Um, but that could, that would be a, a thing that could be done, that could be changed. But we <laughs> I don't, that's an abstraction to the public. Again, it's, they have to know the missiles are dangerous, expensive, and unnecessary. I'm sorry to be such a broken record. No, I'm not sorry. I, I think it's important. I, I don't think you're sorry. I, you should be sorry. I think you should go further. They're immoral. They're evil. Uh, expensive is the least of it, you know, for a, a quarter or a third of what's being dumped into upgrading these missiles, you could end starvation on earth. Uh, I mean, this is lives lost. This is a- Absolutely, but the whole nuclear armament is is is, is uh, immoral. I mean, amoral. Uh, it's, uh, the, 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 it's, it's very upsetting. You and I are both upset. We need more people to be upset. <laughs> that's, that's, that's 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 my goal. I I want them to be have a focused point of 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 being upset, and that's the Sentinel missile that should in f this fiscal year, three point six billion dollars was already assigned, but it's not too late to stop these things. It is. It's not too late to 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 stop this. Um, so we should be we tr trying to stop it. I, I couldn't agree more. We have to get people to work on these issues if they're doing absolutely nothing or if they're focused on something else, uh, because even the people who care, the peace groups, can't take their mind off the most immediate crisis on television. Uh, can't look at the nuclear missiles if there's a war in Ukraine. Can't look at the war in Ukraine if there's a war in Gaza. You know, it, it takes 10,000 dead to get one senator to say, stop bombing Gaza. You're going to need 660,000 dead to have senators to override a veto at that at that rate uh, to stop an ongoing genocide. It's very hard to say, let's talk about the nuclear uh, weapons buildup. And yet we have to, right? We have to. And in fact, uh, the example, uh, um, uh, I thanks to you, I led a book, book club. And one of the one of the attendants of the book club I was too upset by what was going on um, in the, in the Middle East to to continue participating. So uh, it there is a lot to, there is a lot to be concerned about. There's an awful lot of suffering in the world. Um, there is, and uh, but there'd be a whole lot more if you know if we had a nuclear war. Or none at all, uh, which is also not uh, what we want to see happen. Uh, we've been speaking with Peter Manos. The book is called Shadows. I cannot recommend it highly enough. We will have links to the book and to information and flyers that, that Peter gives me at talkworldradio.org. Peter Manos, thanks for everything you're doing and for coming on Talk World Radio. Thank you very much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.